So in this video, I'm going to talk about polyhedral analysis for hardware accelerators. And the first thing to know about polyhedral analysis is that it's not really about polyhedra. Um, polyhedra are really a technical detail, and if you read research papers on polyhedral analysis or even tutorials or explainers, they often get really lost in mathematical details about integer programming and parametric integer programming and all kinds of uh, heavy-duty math that's actually not very important if you're a user of polyhedral analysis. And really what polyhedral analysis is about is modeling functions as sets and relations and using that uh, to optimize or analyze programs. So as an example piece of hardware, suppose we want to uh, implement a 1D convolution where the kernel is all ones. So we're going to take each successive group of three elements here and we're going to sum them up and output them. Um, so, for example, 173926 goes in, and we add up 1 plus 7 plus 3 is 8 plus 3 is 11, and then we do 7 plus 3 plus 9, which is 10 plus 9, which is 19, and I think I actually did the arithmetic wrong here, but uh, I wrote these down quickly. So 3 plus 9 is 12, plus 2 is 14, but I am off by 1, it's 15, but you get the general idea, right? We've got a data stream going in, and each of the three successive elements here are going to get summed up. So here's a really naive HLS implementation for a stream of length 10. So we've got the conv1d function, and we've got an input stream, and you can just read this as a type def for HLS stream if you're used to using Vivado. It's just a ready valid channel. Then we've got the input, or excuse me, the output stream, which is also a hardware stream. And then because this is a naive implementation, we're going to allocate a buffer m that's large enough to store the entire stream. And then in this first loop, we're just going to load every single value from the input stream into m. Then in the second loop, we're going to iterate over this m buffer. So we're going to go from 0 to 8, and we're going to write out mi, mi plus 1, plus mi plus 2. So basically, we're just going to sum up each consecutive group of three elements. And uh, so, for example, the first element will be uh, 0 plus m1 plus m2, or excuse me, m0 plus m1 plus m2. And then the last window we'll do will be uh, m7 plus m8 plus m9, which will take us to the end of m. And in hardware, here's what the resulting schedule is going to look like. So time is going from left to right here on the screen. We're going to do m equals in dot read 10 times. And then once we've done that, we're going to do out dot write, you know, the sum of this three wide window. And we're going to do that eight times to produce all of our resulting windows. And this hardware is going to be really, really inefficient. But let's just go to the terminal and run it to check correctness. So I've implemented this program here. And uh, hardware classes is just an include with some type defs for common things in Vivado. And we've got our conv1d function. We allocate our buffer. And then we've got this first loop, which does the get input operation. And we've got this second loop, which does the compute output operation. It does out.write. And if we run this in a test bench, oh, I'll just show you the test bench for a second. So this is an HLS style test bench. We're going to write 10 values into the input channel. And then we're going to call our conv1d function. And then we're going to read out eight windows, checking if they're the expected value. And of course, the expected value is i plus i plus 1 plus i plus 2, because we wrote in i for 0 to 10. And we get the expected values. So hopefully, that just gives you a little bit of intuition about what this program is doing. But if you're a good hardware engineer, you'll notice that there's a lot wrong with this implementation, right? So the first thing is that we do every single load from the input stream before starting to compute the output. So we load every single value from the input stream into this m buffer before we ever start writing out outputs. Um, and that's a problem because it leads to way too much memory, right? So we've got a buffer of size 10 here, but actually we're only ever going to need three successive elements. So if you think about it, the schedule we really want would look more like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to read in the first three elements, 0, 1, and 2. Then we're going to add 0, 1, and 2 together. And then we're going to keep 1 and 2 in a buffer. And then we're going to read element 3. And then we're going to add elements 1, 2, and 3 together and write them out. And then we're going to save 2 and 3 in the buffer. We're going to keep them there. So we're basically just going to have a circular buffer with three entries. We're going to load three values in, start. And then we're going to get into this steady state where we can compute one output, 
uh, and then take in just one more input. So take in, you know, one, two, three, and then write out one plus two plus three, then take in four and do uh, two plus three plus four, then take in five and do three plus four plus five, and so on. So how would we get to this more optimal schedule using polyhedral analysis? And once we get to that more optimal order of events, how would we figure out how to design uh, a new buffer that exploits this better order of events? So step zero is going to be feeding the program into a polyhedral analysis tool. In my case, I'm going to use a tool called ISL, or the Integer Set Library. And in the next video, I'll talk a little bit about how polyhedral analysis tools process programs and how that's slightly different from the way uh, that a, maybe a normal imperative programming language or a hardware description language would represent a program. So I'll see you in the next video.